In this lecture, we're going to be looking at dihybrid crosses. We are going to be looking at two traits that are independently assorted in both their mother and their father, and what gets passed on to the offspring. In monohybrid crosses, we only looked at one trace. Here's an example of what a Punnett square looks for a dihybrid cross. Notice how it has 16 squares compared to the four that you used in a monohybrid. This one is looking at P color and P shape. It could be yellow or green, or it could be smooth and wrinkled. So this one you would be crossing uh, a yellow smooth with a yellow smooth, both heterozygous for both traits, and you can look at the possible outcomes. Now we're going to walk through an example of a dihybrid cross. We're going to cross a heterozygous purple and a heterozygous smooth corn plant with a yellow and wrinkled corn plant. Now let's look at our symbols. We're going to use big P for purple, little p for yellow, big S for smooth, little s for wrinkled, and now we're going to write out our formula. So our formula will be big P, little p, that is heterozygous purple, meaning it has two different alleles, the dominant and the recessive, with heterozygous smooth, big S, little s, again, heterozygous, two different types of allele, a dominant and a recessive, with a yellow and a wrinkled corn. So if it's yellow and wrinkled, we know it has to be homozygous recessive. So you see little p, little p, and little s, little s. Now that we know the formula, the genotypes of the parents, we have to determine the genotypes of the gametes, the sex cells of each parent. Remember, the alleles will sort independently. That means when you have a big P, it has the equal chance of being paired up with a big S or an equal chance of being paired up with a little s. And I'll show you how we form these gametes. First, we're going to form a gamete by forming, taking the big P and pairing it with the big S. Now, I need to make a gamete forming the big P with the little s, because remember, the big P has an equal chance of being paired with the big S as it does with the little s. That's what independent assortment means. Now, I'm going to make the pairings with the little p. So first, I'll have the little p paired up with the big S. Now I'm going to make my last possible combination, and that's pairing the little p with the little s. And these are the gametes that you can get from the one parent. Big P, big S, big P, little s, little P, big S, little P, little s. Those are the four possible combinations, and each has an equal chance of being passed on to the offspring. Now I'm going to make the gametes for the other parent. Since it is little p, little p, little s, little s, there's only one possible combination that this parent could have for its gamete. That's little p with a little s. They will all be the same. Now I'm going to set up my Punnett square. It's a 4x4 four four square with 16 boxes. Notice how this is different than your monohybrid, where it's only 2x2 two two with 4. Across the top, it's just little p, little s, because remember from that second parent, that was my only possible combination for a gamete, and it's going to be for all four of the possible gametes. It's going to be little p, little s. On the side, with my other parent, notice I had four different choices of gametes I could have. A big P, big S, big P, little s, little P, big S, little P, little s. Those were all my possible combinations, and so I'll line them up on the side. Now I'm going to fill across the first row. I'm going to be pairing a big P, little, big P, big S with a little P, little s. And so the big P will go with the little P, giving me big P, little P for all four of them. And then my big S will go with the little s, giving me big S, little s for all four of them as well. To fill my second row, I'm adding big P, little s with little P, little s. So again, big P goes with little P all the way across, and I'll have little s, little s all the way across as well. Now filling the third row, it's going to be little p with little p, so it's little p, little p all the way across, and big S, little s all the way across. And lastly, I'm going to fill the last row. It's little p, little p, so I'll have little p, little p all the way across, and then I'll do little s, little s all the way across. And this will finish my Punnett square. Now we're going to look at our results. So the first one for a quarter of my genotypes will be big p, little p, big S, little s. And we'll look at the phenotype that this genotype produces. Remember, purple is dominant. So anytime I have a big P, I'm going to have purple corn. 
also smooth is dominant. So every time I have a big S, I'm going to have smooth corn. And so I, I have a quarter of my phenotypes being purple and smooth. My next genotype is big P, little p, giving me purple corn, and little s, little s. That's homozygous recessive, so the wrinkled trait will show. And again, the genotype and the phenotype in this case matches up in percentage, but that won't always happen. And let's look at the third genotype, little p, little p, homozygous recessive, giving me yellow corn, big S, little s. Again, you've got it heterozygous, so it's going to show the dominant trait. And the last one, little p, little p, and little s, little s, homozygous recessive for both, and you'll have yellow wrinkled. And again, the genotype and the phenotype percentages don't always match up. In this case, they happen to. Now we're going to practice another Punnett square. We're going to cross big T, little t, big A, little a, with big T, little t, big A, little a. So the first step is to draw our Punnett square. Again, I have my 4x4, giving me 16 boxes. And then I'm going to make the gametes. Since these have the, both parents have the same genotypes, the gametes will be the same on the top as they are on the bottom. So notice, I have big T paired up with big A. Then I have big T paired up with little a. And then I'll do my little t. Little t with big A. And then I have little t with little a. Those are all my possible combinations from each of these parents, and they line the top and the bottom, or the top and the side. Now I'm going to fill across the first row. So I'll start with just doing the T's. So in the first box, look at I pair up the big T with big T. Second box, big T with big T. And in the third and fourth box, it's big T with little t. And then I go back and fill the A's. First box is big A, big A. Second box, big A, little a. Third box, big A, big A, and fourth box, big A, little a. Now I'm going to fill across the second line. So in the first box of the second line, it's going to be big T with big T, big A with little a. Second box, second line, big T with big T, little a with little a. Third box, big T with little t, big A with little a. And the fourth box, Big T with little t, little a with little a. The third row, first box, I'll have big T paired up with a little t and a big A paired up with a big A. The second box, big T with little t, big A with little a. The next one, I'll have little t, little t with big A, big A. And the fourth one, I'll have little t, little t with big A, little a. Now I'm going to finish in my last row, starting with the first box with big T, little t, big A, little a. Then I'll have the next box, big T, little t, little a, little a. In the third box, little t, little t, big A, little a. And in the last box, little t, little t, little a, little a. If you go back and look at your data, you'll see that 9 out of the 16 will display tall and actual phenotypes, so showing dominant and dominant phenotypes. 3 out of the 16 will be tall and terminal, a dominant with a recessive. Another 3 out of 16 will be short and axial, which is recessive and dominant. And 1 out of the 16 will be short and terminal, show both recessive traits. This is an important ratio to know for when you cross, uh, do a dihybrid cross with two heterozygous parents for both traits.